Hey guys, welcome to The Crew, part one. This is a campaign that was released recently for the hip that purports itself to be rather difficult. Supposedly, we'll be flying in all kinds of different weather and different conditions, um, different altitudes, and it will require knowledge of different avionics and navigation, emergency procedures, and all of that good stuff. Um, so I picked it up and figured, well, it might be fun to uh, bring you guys along and try the campaign out. Um, the situation here reads, this is mission one. The Second World War took the lives of more than 26 million citizens of the Soviet Union. Nearly 5 million people are still missing. They are not alive, and they are not among the dead. 15th of July, 2008. Nalchik. Deliver a unit of the 34th Special Mountain Motorized Rifle Brigade to the eastern slope of Mount Elbrus to the restored hotel from the Second World War, Shelter 11. 4,240 meters altitude. The unit was sent with the aim of finding and repatriating the remains of the Red Army soldiers who died in facing overwhelming odds in battles with the Nazi soldiers. All right, so typically the first mission in any campaign is just a fan flight. It's a fly around to a couple of places, get to know the characters, a bit of the story and what you're going to be up to, the area you're going to be working in, that kind of thing. Uh, this kind of looks like much the same. So we're taking off from uh, Nalchik here. We're going to land at Shelter 11, and then we're going to come back to Nalchik. So it's just a there and back kind of deal. Temperature is 31 degrees, so hot summer day. But I imagine it'll be quite a bit colder once we get up to 4,000 meters. Uh, let's have a look at the briefing images since we've got a few of them. It's very obviously 2008. Never forget. Uh, I guess this is probably where we're going. There's our flight plan, so we're taking off from Nalchik. We're headed down here on a course of 245 for 98 kilometers to an altitude of 4,000 meters. Um, and then on the way back, we're going course of 071, back to, uh, 98 kilometers again to an altitude of 300 meters. Okay, um, worth maybe mentioning now is if you have a physical kneeboard, write that down. If you don't, open up Notepad or take a screenshot or something because I've found that not all missions are good at giving you that information again. They'll show it to you and assume that you've recorded it or captured it, so worth doing. Here's our landing site. We've got one, two, three rows of buildings by the looks of it. That's nice to include. This, this way we can kind of visually confirm that we're in the right place. Uh, not that there should be that many buildings on a mountain, but you know. Um, looks like we can come in over this kind of middle section of buildings here and land there. Probably not a very big landing space by the looks of it. That eh, should be fun. Oh, this is neat. Uh, position of cabin glass area regarding the landing site area for correct landing. So this is a site picture of what your landing should look like from the middle seat if you touch down correctly. So basically just a little bit of the building sticking up here above your autopilot panel. And that's all. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, I haven't seen that in a briefing ever before. Here's our pattern at Nalchik. So we've got our basic box pattern here um, with our inner marker, inner beacon, and non directional beacon here. As our initial waypoint looks like we'll be taken off probably up here and then loop around, come back that way. And the last one is <laughs> maximum volume. So I'm assuming they're going to pipe in all the radio communications over the actual radio um, rather than doing it just like sending a sound file to the unit and the mission editor, which is great. I guess they just want to make sure we have our radio volume up so we get it all. Cool. All right, let's start. I hear an APU. It's not mine. Check. Hatches, shutters, latches locked. Additional armor to move to same weight. No passengers on board. No cargo in cargo bay. Altimeters are checked. Pressure parameters and correction tables are checked. Fuel load 1,000 kilograms. The oil fuel reserve is included in the total fuel load. Nalchik, tail number 92407. Reports received. Helicopter has been pre-flight checked. Aerodrome frequency 136. Flight engineer, start up. Oh, so 407 is us. See that there. Switch engine PZU on. I express my gratitude to all the people who helped me create this project. 
that's a, that's a pretty big list. There's a lot of people involved in creating these campaigns, and frankly, I'm not surprised, given how much time I've spent trying to make a single mission in the past. Well, congratulations to everybody on that list. This, uh, this is quite the accomplishment. Um, I hope it's a lot of fun. All right, while we're out here, there's nothing that says we need to keep the standard livery that the mission editor provides. We can run our own and do whatever we want. And the hip has a whole bunch of really cool liveries, so why not, you know, run one of them? I think we're going to run this one here. Maybe we'll do this one. This looks good. All right, that's a Russian v Russia VIP there. Leave our board number at 407. I'm not going to touch anything else. not going to attach any weapons or anything. I just wanted to change the livery. I really wish you could separate the livery selection from refueling and from rearming. I don't particularly want to request all of those all the time. Anyway, start up. Inverters, batteries... Non-weapon circuit breakers, extinguisher system, fuel shutoff valves left and right, service left and right tank pumps, APU start. Rotor break down, turn on some backlights. Not that we should need them, it's daytime, but DCS lighting can be a bit funky sometimes, and that might help a little. There. APU is up and running. We're not going to wait the two minutes. We're just going to flip over to the left engine there and fire it up. While we're at it, we can tune our radio. 136 was now check. Turn up our volumes here, here, make sure we're on R863, we are, radio we are, and volume for the R863 here. Alright. So they're all started up over there already. Well, there they go, they're taxiing. They're way ahead of me. I wonder if they're going to the same place. They're going somewhere else. How are we doing? Engine 1 is just about there. Okay. Engine 2. going to pause it here and again make another note that you should write this down record this somewhere take a screenshot if you need to and then reference it later because yeah while well, you might be able to get your information in here for the arc 9 we don't have power for the doppler system yet so to enter this in uh, 245 for 98 you, it, you might forget by the time you actually have power for the doppler system so take a screenshot or write it down whatever that's why i say get an e-board anyway here we go like our engines are up and running. So let's throttle up. Radar altimeter. Rectifiers, one, two, three. Generators, one and two. Okay, systems. Band, gyro, gyro cutout, pitch limiting, nagging Natasha, Doppler, radio, everything. 
everything except for Mike, the Laryngia phone. We don't need lights in the back, we have nobody back there, but we are going to turn on our external lights. Dust protection we don't need, we're not going anywhere unprepared to my knowledge. Heating, it's 31 degrees, we don't need it, at least now. Maybe later. Cool. That about does it for everything we need to start, with a couple of exceptions here. So, uh, autopilot center channel on for pitch and roll stabilizing, or damping rather. We're going 245. So we'll set that in our heading indicator in both seats. Also reset our radar out. 245-ish. Now we need to set that here. So our map angle is 245. Now that we have power for our Doppler system. I'm hearing Russian uh, ATC comms in the background, which is cool. Went too far. It starts scrolling faster, so you almost have to un like click a few times. There we go. 245, we are going 98 kilometers. I like to roll it aft to the distance I need to travel, and then it'll count up to zero, rather than letting it start at zero and counting up to whatever distance I need to travel, because then it's up to me to remember that I'm going to up to 98 and do the math to see how much further I have to go. Whereas if I go aft this way, I always know exactly how far I have left to travel. 98 kilometers, that should get us there. Now this is, ooh, our brake is apparently not on. Um, that's measured from the inner beacon, so we're not going to turn this on here until we get over that inner beacon. Okay. I think we are ready to taxi. Radios are set. All of our systems and lights are on. And there we go. APU. And this is why we sweep across and check everything before we go anywhere. Close our blister window. Request taxi to runway. Okay, there we go. Let's do it. I like to bring in just a little bit of collective so that I'm taking some of the weight off the wheels. Makes it a little easier to taxi around. Not enough that you risk a dynamic rollover, though. Control our speed with our cyclic, steer with our anti-torque. I appreciate when mission editors go to the trouble of filling the airfields with other things, static and otherwise. Because DCS by itself tends to feel a bit sterile. Nothing else in the world is moving but you. Receiving, Major General. Guys, on arrival, taxi to the flags and parade and light. Do you copy? Roger, Major General. Taxi right to the red taxiway.
Good old conventional rolling takeoff because why not? I don't do enough of them. Get ourselves up to speed around 120 kph or so. We can ease off on our collective, add a little bit of, or sorry, ease off on our cyclic and add a bit of collective, and we should just kind of pop right up. All right, so we ease off on our cyclic. Bring in some collective. Ooh, a little too much. And up we go. That should have been smoother. That could have been a lot smoother. Oh well. So we're looking for about 200 kph. We just need enough altitude to clear the trees. I'm going to hop over to the other seat. Once we get past the first, or the inner beacon, we got to turn on the Doppler system. So there's our inner beacon right there. As we fly over it, we will hit on. Now we're making the right traffic back the other way. for Doppler. There we go. Okay, and we'll just kind of follow the tracks down there, stay parallel to the airfield. Once we get past the airfield, we can kind of move ourselves back over. We've drifted just a little, a couple kilometers off course, which is fine. We've got lots of time to correct that. Look over the instrument panel. Okay, monitoring DEMA. Climbing, speed 200 kilometers per hour, vertical speed 3 meters per second. Proceeding with controlled climb. Water, controlled climb. All right, so we can add in a little more collective here. Want to start okay, our climb? Ladder. We'll be okay. Boris and I have already been to the shelter when I was the pilot. There is an amazing helo port there. Yeah, some photos. Five by ten meters. A little bit more, but it doesn't make it any easier. That's your problem. My attention. At an altitude of more than 2,500 meters, don't forget to switch the heating on below you. Otherwise, it'll be a long, slow glide right into the hands of the Major General. That is a good point. Already our temperatures come down a few degrees to 25. You can see there. So once we get up high enough, keep an eye on that. We might need to turn on a few things to keep warm. We're undoing our drift angle. Okay. 
It's one of those things about the hip being a single, like it's a multi-crew aircraft that doesn't support multi-crew. So you got to fly all three seats by yourself. So there's a little bit of hopping around, and as much as you know, you might like to fly in the pilot commander's seat over there. Most of the civilian or the non-combat flight really kind of pushes you to fly here in the right seat. Because here's where you've got all your nav instruments. You've got your Doppler down there, and you've got your Doppler drift indicator. I'm drifting right. Uh, and you've got your NS430 GPS nav over here as well. So, plus you have your ARC-9 and ARC-UD panels up there. You've got your other two radios down here. The R828 and the Yadro 1A are both down there. So like it really uh, it really does encourage you to fly in the right seat when you're not doing anything combat related. So some things for us to keep an eye on, especially as we start to climb. So our temperature up there, currently reading about 20 degrees Celsius and falling. Keep an eye on that and know when we need to turn on our other heating options. Uh, our engine RPM down here, we need to keep an eye on them. But more importantly, our main rotor RPM, which really needs to stay uh, above 90%. At 86, we lose our generator. And as we get up into the thinner atmosphere, it's going to be a little harder, especially if we have to turn on anti-icing and other things that are going to sap power from the engines. We're going to have to be careful about how much collective we pull and how much uh, main rotor RPM we have available to do that. Keeping an eye on our airspeed around 200 kph, we can go faster as long as we have the RPM to do it. It gets, gets us there a little quicker. There's no... Uh, there's no time limitation here that I'm aware of. We're drifting a little bit to the right. We need to come left. And that's the other one is keep an eye on our Doppler instruments here. So we've got 77 kilometers to go. A little bit of drifting to the right. Follow that and it'll get us there. So we're also looking at our altitude. We're currently at about 1300 meters. Tough for everyone, Vladimir. Yeah, it's bad. 
Gotta love the sort of awkward pausing in between each section of communications, in between each section of them talking to each other. Never quite sure if they're done. Gotta wait and wait. Oh, they're starting to talk again. Oh, wait again. Well, in the meantime, while we were in the external camera, we drifted a heck of a lot to the right. We've got to come back this way, five kilometers. At least we didn't blow up, though. Uh, looks like our rotor RPM's good, engine RPM's good, uh, airspeed's a little slow. Yeah, we were climbing a bit too much. Altitude's over 2,000 feet now. What's our temperature? Oh, we're getting down to almost 10 degrees. Getting a little chilly out there. I don't need to climb quite so fast. I've got lots of time to go. We're still going 60 kilometers. What I need to do is come left.
All right, so 200 kph, lots of rotor RPM to spare, 50 kilometers to go. We're about halfway there now. Trying to correct our drift. Still, we drifted off to the right during the last set of comms, or the last uh, set of voice lines. Up at 2750 meters and 10 degrees Celsius. Getting a little chilly now. Bring in a little more collective. See if we can keep that speed and that climb. I'm not worried about it until we get high enough and cold enough that I need to turn on anti-icing. Assuming that's going to happen. It's amazing how much power that draws. Nalchik Tower sounds so sleepy. It probably is. That's probably fairly accurate. Okay, we're approaching the mountain, 33 kilometers to go, 
drifting a little to the right here, but 200 kph. We are up at almost 4,000 meters now, 3750. Temperature has dropped to almost zero, which is getting cold, so let's, uh, let's turn this on. And heat the cabin a little. It's probably getting a little chilly in here. That's our KO50 kerosene heater. And that's that tank that's on this side over here. It sticks up more along the front. That one. And you can actually see it starting to smoke. That's the sign of a crew that cares. So that's working, so we can flip that to medium right there. Auto to 15 degrees inside. Yeah, it's getting a little chilly out here. We're up to over 4,000, so we're going to back off on our collective now. Try to keep that speed up slow down a little while it's looking at the heater. But I don't need to be climbing anymore. I think this is our target altitude right about here. 27 kilometers to go. 407 receiving. Watching your checkpoint. Take care. Thanks, 811. If you're worried, you can always go with us. It'll be fun. It's getting below zero, 23 kilometers to go. Let's jump over to this seat, turn on our anti-icing. Left engine and right engine on. There we go. Now, let's have a look at what our main rotor RPM does. Doppler fail. Oops. I tilted up too much. I'm reluctant to trim. I trimmed to basically a hover configuration. I don't really want to retrim in flight because when I come in to land, I, I like having that trim where it was. So I've just been kind of holding a little bit of forward stick pressure, but it means that I have to do other things, like turn on the uh, anti-icing. I tend to climb a little bit. I'm not watching my stick position so much. Alright, so we need to bring in a little more collective here, and we're going to lose some rotor RPM pretty quick now. Uh, I don't need to climb. I just need to... Actually, I need to descend a bit. We're up way too high. I just need to get my speed up. Seventeen and a half kilometers to go. Our speed is up. We are descending a bit. That's good. I'm going to be at that 4,200 meters mark. Our main rotor RPM is drooping just a little. We're below 95% now. I 
At uh, 10 kilometers, we're going to start slowing down. Let's see if we can identify our landing zone up here. Is that... Is that white smoke against a white background? Who pops white smoke on a snowy mountaintop to get my attention? Any... Literally any other color would have stood out like a sore thumb. It would have been so easy, and they popped white smoke. I mean, I guess I still saw it, but... Like, it, unless you know where you're looking, it would be so easy to miss. Well, I guess that's where we're going. Altitude is still a little high, but that's okay. We're coming down. Speed's good. 10 kilometers. All right, we're going to start slowing a little. Aim for 150 kph now. Get some main rotor RPM back while we're at it. That's nice. I might jump over to the left seat for the approach, just because I'm a little more accustomed to flying from here. Out of curiosity, though, what's our external temperature? Minus two? Minus one? Yeah, it's chilly. Steva, approaching frequency 122 to find call sign Gurga. One thirty two point five. Again, we do that with also flying. Four zero seven approaching. Wind at two three zero degrees, gusts up to eight meters per second. Four zero seven affirmative. All right, so we need to come down. We're going to try to bring our speed down to around 120, 125, somewhere around there. Wow, you look at this beautiful landscape and you can get a bit philosophical. Kind of thought it'd come out of Well, don't spit in the mountains or into the wind. Why? Why? Because you'll put your eye out with an icicle. All right, check the pedo heat is on and check the anti-icing engine system. We forgot about that. Pedo left and right. Clock and battery. There's all of our heat. Landing heading 230. Method vertical landing from hover out of ground effect. Ready for landing. Ready. We need to come down significantly. Ready. Ready for landing. Ready. There we go. Trying to maintain that 120 to 130 kph speed as we come down. Trying to keep the landing site approximately in the same place on my windscreen. Uh oh. Icing. And if the icing's on, there's not much else I can do. falling so fast, I guess. Well, that's going to mean we're going around for sure, then, if I can't descend that quickly. That's okay. I kind of expected to be going around. So there is our landing site. We're right down there. Just 
just gonna come left and make a left traffic around. Come back in with a little less altitude this time. Keeping an eye on that rotor RPM and our descent rate. out just a little here. This is one of those things where patience is a virtue and often gets me killed, where I just don't want to fly that far away from the landing site and do the long enough traffic pattern to give myself a smooth approach. I tend to cut it too soon and then my approach is too steep and that gets me into trouble. So we're gonna extend just a little more than I might like. And then we'll start our turn. Again, keeping an eye on that descent rate. I wanna actually keep myself level right about now. Speed's gotta stay up above 110, 120. There's our site just up there. Alright, try to keep that speed up. Altitude is good, probably just going to come straight in. I don't think I need to climb a little. So not quite just your average fam flight, just fly from A to B, but did we mention that B is way up high on a mountain where the air is thin and you need anti-icing and you're going to have not a whole lot of uh, spare power available to you? So you got to do this smoothly or you risk uh, losing your generator and unrecoverable VRS, potentially. complicates things just a little. And, uh, oh yeah, there's our landing pad, hey? That last building in the row there in the middle? That's, yeah. Alright, we need to slow ourselves down. Line up. be losing effective translational lift anytime. I want to come in right over those buildings which I'm drifting away from. Add collective now. There we go. Okay. Now I'm not going to try to do a nice smooth one movement precision landing onto that building. I am not that good of a pilot. I'm going to get myself into a hover and then basically just hover my way over to it and set down. You know, I've been practicing my precision landings. They're not good enough to land on a building like that. I would probably land right in front of it. It's kind of the way things have been going. Just bring ourselves in nice and slow. Now this is where not re-trimming throughout that flight is has been handy. And just a little more, just a little more. I uh, can't see anymore. Or no, I need to back up. Try that 
one more time. I went too far. Again, come in. It's hard to know, I can't barely see it. It's hard to know if I'm lined up straight, left and right. If I'm far enough forward. go. All right, we're down. Brake is on. Touchdown. Let's have a look. Just barely. I do love the silly scenarios that these campaigns tend to have. Okay, I'm setting a parking brake here. Reciprocal heading. Turn that around. Now, if we just fly backwards, it will count us back up to 98. So we can just leave it that way. Or we can change our heading here. So naturally, because I didn't bother to write down or take a screenshot of that last bit of text, I forgot what the uh, heading they gave us was, so we're just going to go with 075, which is basically reciprocal to what we had before. Uh, and we'll go 89 kilometers as well. Alright, so we've punched in our reciprocal heading and distance into our Doppler nav, we put it into our, our course selection. We still have our uh, heat on, our anti-icing on, we still have our ARC-9, everything is still set as it was before. We're just basically gonna take off and fly back now. Got ourselves trimmed.
All right, three G's, top of T's, WC's are out. Feels good for about an hour. Clear, clear, clear. Let's do it. So on the return flight, we've got much better visibility of all our cockpit instruments this time. Go DCS lighting. We're looking for similar speed, 200 kph. This time we're looking to descend. Two or three meters per second. that uh, Dima decided not to go back. I don't want to have to do that again. <laughs> that was hard. I'm climbing again. I really don't need to be climbing. There we go. Temperature is slowly coming back up. I think he said 6.8, not 7.5, hey? Probably. We'll settle for 7.0, and we'll, uh, we'll adjust this as well. Settle for 7.0, that'll get us close enough that we can find it ourselves from there. Again, the importance of a knee pad. guess we should probably be getting off of this channel, hey? Well, I'll wait. At some point we'll need to go back to 136 and contact Nalchik. Six. Four zero seven, Elgin. Four seven, four zero seven. Our cargo is on board. We are descending. Repulse and approach. Affirmative. We'll report on approach.
out. Go back! Are you serious, Atsukov? This is a dumb bus. I left all my documentation there, and information about victims, too. What will I say to the General? And now the base will have to wait three days until the remaining group comes down. Calm down, Lieutenant. The Army teaches bitch ones of nothing else. And if you don't have that, then show some Army savvy. And if you don't have any savvy, then no one can help you. <laughs> I'm getting nervous here that we're going to get sent back. 10 degrees, I think it's time to turn a few things off. Turn off some heating. I'm going to jump over to the other seat. Turn off our anti-icing. Get some power back. And finally, we can turn off the combustion heater as well. And off. I don't actually remember if there's more to it or if you just turn the fan off. Oh, there we go. Right off. It's in the middle. And it'll cool down. Yeah, it's 10 degrees. goes. A little quieter in here, too. Get all of our spare engine power back. Still getting nervous that they're going to send me back. I actually am not sure that we would even have the fuel for it. We started with thousand we're down to 400 okay. yeah I don't know if we could actually make it back At this point, we're just going to turn off the Doppler because we know where we're going. Need to get down lower. Rotor RPM is good. Airspeed is a little high, but okay. Altitude's coming down. Drift is good. Fuel's still okay. Four zero seven receiving. Four zero seven, this is the squadron commander. Receiving, comrade colonel. Tarasov, just hover over the railway and land. No taxi. It will look better for the journalists, and it will be quicker. It's too hot today. Sure, stick to the asphalt. Understood. Landing into a hover out of ground effect over the flags of the red taxiway. Yeah, all right. No conventional landing. We're just going to come straight in and drop down. Request and approach. All right. chance to practice my precision approaches, I suppose. And we're going to hop back over to this side. I 
I can't land in the flags. I kind of have to just land in front of them, I guess. We'll see. Still on a pretty steep approach. Keep my speed up about here until we're lower. Is there a particular orientation I need to land in? Do I need to be facing them? I guess it probably doesn't matter. Alright. Reduce our descent rate just a little. Still going to be a bit of a steep approach, that's okay. 200 meters. Looking at the radar altimeter now. At about a hundred meters, I want to start. Okay, well, is that the right place? Touchdown. Oh, that's it. Let's turn it off. Flight engineer, shut down the engines. Okay. Do I actually get to go through the shutdown? I guess I do. Well, that's fun. Distinguished guests, colleagues, comrades, soldiers of the special unit of the 34th Mountain Motorized Rifle Brigade and the pilots of the 4th Mixed Aviation Division perform their duty today with honor and dignity. Commander Alexander Suvorov said the war is not over until the last soldier is buried. Today we will bury the remains of our heroes, heroes of the Second World War. Let us honor the memory of our soldiers with a minute's silence. Well, that's cool. Alright, let's uh let's turn everything off then. I mean, shh. 